Namo Buddhaya, this is Abhinav Gulecha and I welcome you. Uh, today I am uh, doing uh, this video on Middle Discourses 57 and the, uh, the, the title of the discourse is The Ascetic Who Behaved Like a Dog. Right. So this is an interesting uh, discourse. The link to the entire discourse is given in the description. So in this basically discourse, uh, Buddha came across two ascetics. Now there, one ascetic was Punna Kolyaputta. Uh, now this Punna Kolyaputta, what he was doing is that he had taken a vow to behave like a cow. And then there was Senya, a naked ascetic who had taken a vow to behave like a dog. So one of them, one ascetic said that I will behave like a cow. Another said I will behave like a dog. Right? And uh, they both went up to the Buddha and Punna said to the Buddha that uh, sir, this naked dog ascetic Senya does the hard thing. So Senya what he did was that he eats food placed on the ground like he exactly lives as a dog lives for a long time he has undertaken that observance to behave like a dog where will he be reborn in the next life right so someone would have told them that you know if you do it like a, if you behave like a cow you will attain some heaven if you behave like a dog you will attain some heaven someone would have told them so they were some scriptures somewhere they must have studied and they were practicing that so then they came to the Buddha and asked that what this this ascetic who is behaving like a dog and where will he be reborn in the next life? So first Buddha said, sorry enough that I, I won't, don't want to discuss about that. So second, third time they asked them the same question. Then uh, Buddha said, take someone who develops the dog observance fully and uninterruptedly. That means fully the person observes himself to be a dog. Sorry, it's a bit funny, you know, when, when I'm, you know, saying this also, I, I kind of, it's a bit of funny that person is, develops the dog observance fully and uninterruptedly. That, that means throughout the day, he, is, he keeps on observing himself. He keeps on acting as a dog. They develop a dog's ethics, a dog's mentality and a dog's behavior fully and in, uninterruptedly. When their body breaks up after death, they are reborn in the company of dogs, right? So that is, they are reborn in the animal realm, where they are reborn in the company of dogs, right? Or maybe even a human realm, right? Where they are reborn as dogs. But if they have such a view that by doing this precept or by this observance, may I become one of the gods, then this becomes a wrong view. And Buddha says, anyone who harbors wrong views is reborn in one of the two places, hell or animal realm. So if the dog observance succeeds, it leads to rebirth in the company of dogs. But if it fails, it, it leads to hell. And when he said this, Senya cried and burst out in tears. Because he had been practicing so, you know, in uh, reverently, this dog observance. Someone would have told them that you will reach this or that heaven and everything. So Buddha says, this is the reality, right? So... See, one thing where what my reflection is that, you know, that there is this thing that what is the last thought in your mind at the time when you die. So when one, whatever we have done continuously, progress continuously in our lives, the end thought in our mind is not likely to be much different. So if, if we have been angry, we have been using harsh words, harsh speech, anger throughout our life, we have not restrained our senses, Right? At the time of the death, we will still harbor that angry mind, which will make us reborn in a lower realm, a hellish kind of a realm. Similarly with lust, if we have, you know, not controlled our sense faculties and we have become lustful and, you know, engaged in sexual misconduct uh, in our life, at the time of our death also, still those kind of sexual thoughts will remain in our mind, which will lead us to our rebirth. So similarly here, the person was completely observing the dog uh, behavior, dog mentality, that will b lead him to a getting born as a uh, dog. Whereas, if he has been practicing with this wrong view, that I would have, I would get something, I'll be a, in a company of gods, this Buddha said, this wrong view will lead him to hell. Right? Okay, hell or animal realm. Okay, so then Buddha said, that's why I was not, uh, not keen about telling you this but since you asked me three times I uh, asked okay then it, it came to Punna Punna had taken a vow to behave like a cow 
right so there is this thing i think in hinduism there is this, there was this observance at some time that if you behave like a cow if you drink cow's milk if you bath with cow's milk if you live amongst the cows then one day you will after death you will be born in the golok a uh, heaven of cows right so the buddha said so now let's see what buddha says so again buddha says that take someone who develops the cow observance fully and uninterruptedly they develop a cow's ethics cow's mentality and a cow's behavior fully and uninterruptedly when their body breaks up after that they are reborn in the company of cows so here when buddha talks about reborn in the company of cows this is not the heaven cows the heavenly realm consisting of cows this is basically born in the realm of you know born in you know the between the cows right so but if they have such a view that by this precept or observance of fervent austerity or spiritual life may i become one of the gods this is their wrong view an individual with wrong view is reborn in one of the two places hell or animal realm so similar answer as buddha gave regarding the dog observance then punno also cried okay then buddha talked about the four kinds of deeds right so buddha said four because buddha may have kind of uh, now they requested that okay we are giving up with these observances please teach us so so buddha said four kinds of deeds that i have realized through my own insight dark deeds with dark results bright deeds with bright results third is dark and bright deeds with dark and bright results fourth is neither dark nor bright deeds and neither dark nor bright results which leads to the ending of deeds so here basically buddha is sharing about both all the four so first is dark deeds with dark results is where a person makes hurtful choices by way of body speech and mind hurtful choices by way of body speech and mind having made these choices they are reborn in a hurtful world where hurtful contact contacts strike them that means they are they are covered they are you know we find themselves surrounded by hurtful contacts hurtful people situations or energies who who attack them strike them they feel the pain touched by hurtful contacts they experience hurtful feelings that are exclusively painful like the beings in hell this is how a being is born from a being your deeds determine your rebirth and when you are reborn contacts strike you this is why i say that sentient beings are heirs to their deeds this is so deep friends sentient beings are heirs to their deeds that means we are the heirs to our deeds whatever we do to today we are the heirs to our deeds like we will kind of uh, face the our the results consequences of our deeds today in the future second what are bright deeds with bright results it's when someone makes pleasing choices by way of body speech and mind having made so it's all about choices it's all about in this moment we have this choice whether we want to make a hurtful a wrong choice a choice which leads to creating suffering or we creating happiness so making the hurtful choices the pleasing choices they are reborn in pleasing world they are touched by pleasing contacts they experience pleasing feelings and they are exclusively happy right so that is the second third third is basically person commits dark or and bright deeds with dark and bright results so person makes both hurtful and pleasing choices and doing everything they are reborn as humans some as gods and some in the hand so most of us who have been born in this human realm we have made in the past kind of a mix of dark and bright deeds we made dark deeds also we made bright deeds also so we are like born here in this human realm and where we see both sukh and dukh right so we pleasant contacts also strike us uh, and unpleasant contact also contacts also strike us so sometimes we feel pleasant feelings sometimes we feel painful feelings right then what is neither dark nor bright deeds with neither dark nor bright results which leads to ending of the deeds it's the intention to give up dark deeds with dark results bright deeds with bright results and both dark and bright deeds with both dark and bright results this is called neither dark nor bright deeds right so basically this is basically the noble eightfold path following the noble eightfold path of right speech right action right livelihood right effort right mindfulness right concentration right view and right thought right thinking 
So this is the path that leads to neither dark nor, nor bright deeds, which, are, which doesn't give neither dark nor bright results and leads to elimination of suffering. So this is the noble eightfold path, right? Walking on the noble eightfold path. Okay, so when Punna heard this, he said, excellent, I became your lay follower. So Punna became a lay follower. And then when Senya heard this, he said, okay, I excellent, I go for refuge in the world. So he became a part of the Buddha's Sangha, right? And then Buddha talks about that you have to undergo a four-month probation. So he said, sir, what is four months probation? For this teaching, I can go undergo four years of probation, right? So, so, so that was how it is there. And it is even mentioned that after some time, that after Senya uh, became part of Buddha's teaching, after some time he obtained full end, realized the supreme end of the spiritual path and he became one of the perfect. So he became an Arihant, Arihant after uh, some time. So this is about this discourse uh, where the uh, Buddha advised ascetic who, became, who were ob observing these things so friends, it's in time to look into these kind of observances, this kind of extreme penances, you know, like Buddha also refuted the, the Jain practices of extreme fasting and everything. Take most important thing is rather than penicing, doing all these penances is to look, look into the mind, purify the mind because the mind is where all the problems reside, not in the physical world, right? So recall the earlier discourse, MN56, you can also check out that. That Buddha said the mental deeds are the most worst of the deeds, not the physical deeds which were claimed by the Jain uh, ascetic Mahavira. Right? So Buddha said that look into your mind, purify your mind, develop your mind, cultivate good thoughts, right? And, and, and let go of these kind of observances. Have the right view, have the right view of that everything is changing. This is there is no self and there is unsatisfactoriness in everything. So do please reflect, you will get your own insights. Do please check the discourse also, read the full discourse. Please post your insights and reflections in comments section. Thank you so much for watching this video. Namo Buddhaya, Namo Buddhaya.